Now let's talk about task of t. With task of t, we have the representation of an asynchronous method that it is going to return something in the future. That something could be a string, a number, a class, whatever. Let's do an example. What we're going to do is that we're going to try to communicate with a web API that we're going to build, and we will try to retrieve the message that we receive from the web API. So for that, let's go to the solution explorer and let's create a new project. Let's go to add new project. Let's select SP.NET Core web application. Let's click on next. And I will say web API and I will click on create. Now let's click on API and I will click on create. The idea is that since this web API is external, to our WinForms application, talking to the Web API is an I.O. operation, which means that we will have to use, or we should use, asynchronous programming. I am going to create a controller, so I will create a new class here, and I will say greetings controller, and I will inherit from controller base, and I will bring this namespace, and I will say route here, and I will say API slash greetings. And we will also have the API controller attribute here. Here, we're going to create an action, an HTTP GET action. So let's say HTTP GET. And we expect to receive a string, which we will call name, because it's going to be the name of a person. And we're going to say action result of a string, get greeting. And I will say a string name. And then I will just simply say something like a string interpolation, hello, and the name of the person, name. Now, whenever I run my project, I want to run both my WinForms application and my web API. For that, I can go here and I can right click at the solution here and I can say set startup projects and I will say multiple startup projects and I will say here action start and action start here also. So let's click on OK. And now when I run my application, both the WinForms application and the Web API will run. Let's test that. Let's press Ctrl F5 to run our applications. Here we have the WinForms application and here we have the Web API. From the Web API, I will need the URL, so I will copy it. And then I will go back to Visual Studio because now we want to make our WinForms application make an HTTP request to this endpoint that we have here. So let's go back here and I will say API URL because I want to have this URL here so that we can use it. And let me make this a field of this class. And then we will also have an HTTP client as a field. So I will say HTTP client equal to new HTTP client. And I will also make this a field of my class. And now we need some UI. We need some UI because I want the user to be able to write a name, the name of the person that the user wants to greet. So let's go here and I will write label here. And then I will drag this label over here and I will press F4 to bring the properties. And I will say something like input. And then I will say text box. This is the text box control and I will put it here. F4 again. But this time I want to go to the name property and I will name this txt input and I will press enter and that should be it. Now I will organize this a little bit, just a little bit closer. And now let's go back to the code behind and let's start working. The first thing that I'm going to do is that I am going to reduce this to zero just so we don't have to be waiting five seconds every time we run our application. After that, what I want to do is to go here and say name, and I am going to get the text that the user wrote on the TXT input text box. And now I will create a new method, which is going to communicate with our web API, retrieve the value and return it. And since it is going to return something and it is an asynchronous method, we're going to return a task of t. So let's say private async task of t, but that t is going to be a string. Why it is going to be an string? 
Well, because this value that we're going to return from the web API is a string. So that is what I am going to return from my method. So I will say get greetings and then I will pass the name, this name that we have here. And then I will say using var response equal to await HTTP client dot get async. And as you can see, this is a get async method, which means that it is going to do an HTTP get request to our web API. So we have to pass the URI that we will request. So I will say the following, I will use a string interpolation and I will say API URL slash greetings slash the name of the person, which is exactly what we have here. Here we have API greetings and the name of the person. And that is what we're doing here. After that, I will say bar greeting equal to await response read content read as a string async. And this string that we have here, this greeting that we have here is this value that we have here. Now let's go back here and we can just return it. Let's say return greeting and that's it. Now I can come here and I can say something like greeting equal to await get greetings and then I can pass the name. Now since we are doing an await here, that means that we are going to wait for the communication with the web API to happen and then finally, maybe after a few seconds or milliseconds, when our web API responds, then we're going to get a hold back of the UI thread and we're going to execute the following lines of code. So what we're going to do is that I am going to take this greeting variable that we have here and I will pass it to this message box method that we have here so that we can display the message on the screen. And we must not forget to include here a slash API. And now we're ready to test. Let's press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And remember to always close your WinForms application before trying to run your solution. Now I will write here Felipe and I click on start. And as you can see here, we have hello Felipe. Hello Felipe comes from our web API, which means that we are communicating with our web API using asynchronous code. Let me write here another name, Jennifer, start, and as you can see, it works too. So as you can see, when you write an asynchronous method, it has to return either task, if it is not going to return anything, like this method that we have here, or if it is going to return something, then you have to use task of something, task of the data type of that something, like in my case, it is a string here, but it could be any other data type, like an int, a date, a bool, a class, or whatever. So let's write back a string here. And we also saw that by using await, we are suspending the execution of the current thread. So we are liberating it or freeing it so that it can be used in other parts of the application. And once we have a response, for example, from our web API, then we will use that thread again to execute the rest of the method, just like we're doing here.